All right, so let's have two more key value pairs for this navigation. And through that, we will have another example. First of all, we don't want to code everything here in our main.js. Normally in a real world application, we have different documents, then we can import them here to use it. So we have more organized code. So for that, I'm going to create a langs folder in our source folder. And within that, we will have few JS documents. Now in this example, I'm using JS, but we could also use JSON. So I will have English, Spanish, and one for Japanese. Then in each of these documents, I will have an object. And within that object, I will have messages, which is another object. And then I can grab this greet and just copy it and paste it here. Then we can export that English variable we have up here in the English document. And later on, we will import it in main.js. Now let's just copy this whole thing, paste it for Spanish and Japanese. And we just have to change these names and also this value. So for Spanish, we want to say Spanish and also change the value like this. Same thing for Japanese. And I'm just going to copy this text here and paste it here. All right, so we have English, Japanese, and Spanish. Now, instead of this, let's use those external documents. We can delete this object in front of ENUS and say English, which needs to be imported, and then messages. And I just noticed I misspelled this messages. So let me go there and fix it. And I will just copy paste this and fix it in every document. And here we want to say English messages for ENUS for Spanish. We want to say Spanish dot messages and same thing for Japanese. All right, so now we are importing those documents and it is much, much cleaner what we have in our main.js and whatever message or translations we want to add, we can do it here. Now let's talk about that navigation. So we want to keep things organized. And in this case, we want to have a nav and this navigation will have different key value pairs. So it's another object within the messages. So we have a home here, which is going to be home, then our about link. So again, notice this is an object within the messages object. And I'm going to copy this, paste it for Spanish as well as Japanese. And since I don't know the translations, I'm just going to add S for Spanish before these texts and J for Japanese. We could, of course, use a Google Translate or something, but I'm just going to keep it like this. We know the language would change since we have these S and J. So now let's go back to our app component. We have the links right here. We want to replace this with that translation. So again, we use the T method. This is looking for a key, right? And this time we don't want to say home like this because that's inside another object. So we want to say nav dot home. So you notice even though we are passing that as a string, but the syntax is just like a JavaScript object. So now let's copy this and paste it for the about and go back to our website. You notice we have J home and J about because we have selected Japanese. If we go to English, then we see the translation, same thing for Spanish. So that was our example of having objects within the messages object. Now, sometimes you want to have a dynamic text instead of just saying hello. For example, you want to say hello user and that user should be the username. So in our greet property, we can have a user in the curly brackets and that would represent a dynamic value. So let's copy this first and paste it in every other document and see how we can now provide this user in our app component and to this greet message where we are showing it. So at the moment, we can only see that text hello and we don't see anything else in front of it, but we can provide a second argument to this T method, which is going to be an object. And this is just like the URL parameters. We want to provide the parameter we defined in our translation and then the value for that. For example, the name John. And if we go back to our website, we can see that name. And when we switch translations, we can see that text hello is changing, but the name stays the same. Now this value could be from anywhere. It could be from an API, from an array or any other source. But that's how we can pass dynamic parameters to our translations. So first we define that parameter using curly brackets. And then in our component in the T method, we provide that as a second argument in an object. Now let's have another example. Sometimes these messages could be separated. For example, I will put this back to the way it was. So we have the hello text again in all these other languages. And then we have a separate property called user. And in here we want to say, for example, this user's name is John, but we want to say hello, John. 
and we want to use this hello which is sitting up here inside this other translation so this is called a linked messages we want to link a message to another one for that we can use at colon and then the name of that message we want to use in this case we want to say greet and then maybe a space john so this would translate to this property up here and whatever the translation is now let's provide this in other languages as well and i'm not going to add it for japanese just to show you something so we only have it on the spanish and english but not in japanese so back to our app component let's delete this since we don't have an argument anymore or a parameter and then output that user message so back to our website in english we can see hello and then hello john so this text hello is coming from up here and if we change it to spanish that one will change too so these two are linked therefore we can see the translation now if we go to japanese you can see this is changed but not this one this is where that fallback locale comes in. Since we don't have that user key in our Japanese translations, then the fallback goes back to English. And that's how we can have linked messages. And also we saw an example of fallback locale. Now this is a silly example because we don't want to say hello John in every language, but we could again make this dynamic and make it user and provide that user here as a second argument and then whatever value we want to use. So now we are saying hello Mike in Spanish or English. Now with this add symbol, we can also have modifiers. And sometimes you want to change the case of these letters to capital or lowercase or make it all caps. So right now we are saying at colon greet. So that will show us this hello. If I say at dot lower and then colon greet, you notice that H is turned to small letter. If I say upper, then it's all caps. And if I say capitalize like this, then it goes back to the way it was. So even if this H was a small in here in the translation, then again, on our website, it's a capital H. And these are built-in modifiers. We can also have custom modifiers. So let's have an example of that one. In our main.js, where we have our create i18 function, we can add another option, and that is modifiers. This is where we can define our custom modifiers. And here we can have custom functions to grab a string and manipulate it the way we want and then return it back. So let's create a snake case modifier. And in this example, we want to grab the string, whatever string we have, and divide it where there is a space and then join it again with an underscore. We can pass a function here, accept a string as a parameter, then say split that string where there is a space. So I'm passing a space between quotations and then join them using the join method with an underscore. And that's it. So these are simple JavaScript methods. So we know the split method will divide a string based on the location of a space and it will give us an array. Then again, we want to join the elements of that array with an underscore. Therefore, we would get a string with underscores in place of each space. So this is our custom modifier called the snake case. If we want to use it, for example, in English translation, we can use it the same way we use the built in modifiers. So we can say at dot snake case and the message we want to modify is greet so for this example let me add hello world like this notice we have a space here and if we go back to our website we can see that space being replaced with an underscore and we can see that in english and japanese but not in spanish because we didn't provide it so if we covered interpolation which allows us to have dynamic values in our translations we covered linked messages with custom modifiers and now we want to talk about the plural and the singular version of words